Hey, thanks for tuning into this Griffin tutorial video. We're going to be talking today about the new Checkmate HD 22. This is a pretty cool suppressor because uh, early in the company's history, actually the first silencer product we ever did was the Checkmate back in 2005. Uh, a lot of companies get into the suppressor space uh, with, a, with a rimfire suppressor. Um, so we did, we did as well way back when. Um, the Checkmate was the first one and it, it went through, I think like five or six different revisions. This is one of the later revisions. Um, this one actually has a Dousman, Wisconsin uh, address on it. The first ones had a Wales address on it, Wales, Wisconsin, which is actually where the Griffin comes from. Um, we grew up in a Welsh settlement village when we were kids and that's uh, where we first incorporated the company. So this, this product was really cool because it had this miniaturized three lug uh, spring mounting system, kind of like a mini MP5 three lug. So it would snap on, snap off. Now, um, it was really neat. A lot of people really liked this. Um, and there were some drawbacks to it, however. If the unit got carboned up and stuff like that, it was, you know, it needed to be cleaned quite often. Um, when it did get carboned up, sometimes it would have a little bit of issue with being totally straight and having low POI shift. So uh, there is a reason why we kind of went away from making that three lug system. However, uh, we, we obviously have one in the company still for homage sake. The new uh, Checkmate HD is similar to the old one in that we wanted to provide a true rimfire sized suppressor. So something that was relatively slender, lightweight, but also high quality. And in keeping with the tradition of the three lug mini QD system, we have decided to opt in the easy lock system. So if you look at Griffin Easy Lock, you can check that out. Uh, basically what it is, is it's a miniaturized taper mount for you know your pistols and rifles, stuff like that. It has an outside thread on it and an interfacing taper on the front of the adapter. So you can screw this on, it'll hit that taper and now it's locked up really nice and tight. Uh, you don't have to worry about baffle strikes and things like that that you would normally have to worry about with direct thread suppressors. So. That is the included mounting system. The Checkmate does include one of these adapters as well as, of course, the Easy Lock interface on the rear. The other uh, mounting system that you can put in this if you wanted to would be the Cam Lock system, which is an actual three lug version of the Easy Lock. Um, so those are the two mounting systems. We decided to opt for the Easy Lock just because a lot of people like it. It's a little less finicky, very solid. So that's that. Um, going into the Specs on the suppressor, it's 1.07 inches. So just a little bit thicker than the original uh, Checkmate. Uh, quite a bit shorter though, at only five inches overall length. 5.8 ounces is gonna be the total weight. Uh, now that's because the silencer is made of 7075 aluminum, which is the high grade aluminum. It's three times stronger than 6061 series aluminum or roughly as equal in strength to 300 series stainless steel. Um, so very strong, high aerospace quality aluminum outer tube body, uh, which features some nice texture on there for gripping, uh, et cetera. The front cap is gonna be 17.4 stainless steel, which is nitrided and features geometry that allows for a quarter to take it down. So very easy there in order to take this presser apart. The rear is 17 Ford stainless steel as well, that easy lock interface, and that is gonna be uh, DLC coated. So really high quality coating there. Uh, this suppressor features carbon guard baffles. That's kind of the new big thing from Griffin that we're gonna be rolling out um, on, in this suppressor, which is a fully unsealed inner core. So the tube, the, the inside of the tube is totally clean as well as the mounting system. So essentially you can shoot it a, a ton and you can get it apart very easily. This is actually the first fully sealed rimfire silencer on the market to our knowledge. And that is, this is a pending utility patent and we'll get into that later in the unboxing. So without further ado, we will get into the unboxing. So to get to the unboxing, we will just unpack this thing quick. There's some cool brand stickers in there for you. There is an alignment check rod card that talks about uh, alignment check rods, which Griffin Armament sells. There is a easy lock barrel adapter for you. Now this one's gonna be threaded half by 28, which is the common threading. I'll just take that out of the package so you can see that. 
A half by 28 is the common thread pitch for rimfire rifles in the United States and, and pistols. So it comes with what you need there to get onto the gun. A few replacement O-rings for the baffle system itself. And then also we've kind of standardized and uh, chose to start providing manuals with an easy QR code. Okay, so um, there's a QR code for the digital manual on one side, as well as these videos like this on the other side. So that's your manual, very easy. Just pull out your camera phone, scan it, and it'll take you uh, to where you need to go. And then obviously what you're actually paying for, which is the silencer in one of our little uh, brand pouches. Now the suppressor is fully assembled from the factory, ready to go. So once you fit up your adapter, you can start shooting and that's it. So we'll get into the disassembly in just a second. Okay, so for disassembly, you're definitely gonna wanna check out that QR code manual. Um, we spent a lot of time on our tech manuals and there's a ton of good information in there as well as warnings on how not to damage your suppressor or do anything unsafe. So check that out, but this is a nice kind of visual representation of the disassembly process. Now with this particular suppressor, we're gonna start with the front end cap, which is not uncommon to a lot of our suppressors. So I'm gonna take a quarter and just interface it with the front cap and start screwing that off. And it's really important to start disassembling this suppressor from the front, not the back. Okay, and you'll see why in a second. So this has an O-ring on it, this uh, front end cap. So that O-ring actually interfaces with the baffle assembly. So from here, we're not gonna start pulling baffles out of the front or anything. This carbon guard utility patent essentially has all these O-rings on the OD, on the outside diameter of the baffles, which actually squish everything together and keep everything um, essentially maintained. So you're gonna take the rear mount and unscrew it. And that's actually gonna be unscrewing the entire baffle assembly as well. So the baffle assembly comes out like this, all squished together with the rear interface. You'll notice that the exterior of these baffles are basically as new clean from the factory, which is pretty astonishing when you see the inside of these baffles because this is actually a demo unit that we've taken to demos and we've actually shot quite a bit. Um, but that is the carbon guard technology, which is very cool. Um, the inside of the suppressor, we'll show you this in some B-roll, but again, I'm wiping my finger in here. There's literally zero carbon. So this thing is entirely fully sealed, which is really badass. Um, for anyone who's got some legitimate rimfire uh, suppressor usage time under their belt, you'll know that rimfire ammo is extremely dirty. You know, the lead projectiles are, they're either copper washed or they're just fully exposed lead. They're not copper jacketed like centerfire rifle ammunition and pistol ammunition. So there's a lot of lead that's stripped from the rifling of the barrel and is blasted into the suppressor. And so there's a ton of accumulation of, of carbon and lead deposits in, in the rimfire silencer, which is why sealing it up like this um, with such an, a novel idea makes it so cool for the end user because taking it apart is a cinch. So from here, you can take the rear mount off of its squishy little O-ring. And now you can start seeing the actual carbon and copper deposits on these baffle faces and be like, wow, they actually did use that thing because it looked brand new. Um, but that's the cool part about the Carbon Guard Tech, okay? We also have EcoFlow baffle technology in here. You'll see that with a lot of the Griffin Armor products as well. Uh, we have a tuned peripheral porting in our baffle stacks, which help reduce blowback. They help optimize the sound signature reduction of the suppressor so that we're getting an optimized sound signature uh, numbers both at the muzzle of the firearm and also at the two ear positions of the shooter. So we do a lot of R&D on these suppressors, um, a lot of testing, a lot of tuning, making sure these ports are the exact right size, the exact quantity of ports are necessary, um, also per baffle position. So you'll notice that some of these baffles don't have porting at all. Well, that's because in the testing process, you know, we did a lot of different prototypes and basically tuned the suppressor to have the best overall sound performance we could provide you guys in this size package. Um, and that's also why you'll see this line scribed on the outside of the uh, baffles, this laser etched line, as well as the numerical order of, this, of the baffles. So we wanna obviously go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, assembling these in the proper order, okay? So for Maintenance, okay, that's that basically covers disassemble, disassembly, pretty easy, nothing crazy there. Um, you'll also notice, of course, that this rear easy lock mount is in perfect condition. There's literally zero carbon 
um, on the threads or anything uh, of the suppressor because it's 100% sealed, which is super cool. So the tube actually requires almost no maintenance. Usually we would say, you know, get out a bristle brush, run it in there, make sure the threads are clean, you know, uh, oil them, take a rag to them, clean them out. You don't really have to do this to this tube. It's, it's basically perfect. You also don't have to do it to the outside threads on this mount. That's also perfect. Now, you uh, would want to clean this taper lock in, in here. Um, so definitely clean that a little bit, uh, relube that. Um, the front cap also doesn't require very much cleaning as well because it's also O-ring sealed. Um, so those three parts require basically slim to none maintenance. Really the maintenance on the suppressor is just the baffles and it's really these faces. You know, the actual face of the baffle is the only place that's really accumulating that copper and lead buildup. So those you can take out a bristle brush and you can just kind of brush that or you can disassemble these, throw them in an ultrasonic cleaner. Again, we go over all this stuff in the manual, so read that. Um, the O-rings, uh, you know, they will break down over time. So the more that you take apart the suppressor and put it back together, the more those O-rings are kind of break, kind of, kind of break down over time. Now you can find all uh, maintenance parts for your suppressors on our website under the silencer maintenance section. So we we probably provide more maintenance support and end user support for our suppressors than any other suppressor company as, as, as well as I'm aware. Um, but these are really cheap O-rings. Grab a couple packs of them on our website. Um, there's also a few that are provided with the suppressor for you. Um, but this suppressor doesn't need to be taken down all that much. Um, I believe the manual states that we're telling you that you should take it down approximately every 2,000 rounds or so. Okay, so that's quite a bit of shooting. Um, you can leave it sealed for a couple thousand rounds. Um, and then we do suggest that you take it apart at some point, you know, clean that stuff. And if you take it apart, probably five or six or 10 or 20 times, something like that. Um, this one's been taken apart quite a bit because it's a demo can. We probably took, th took this thing apart 50 or 60 times. It's actually st on, its, on its first set of O-rings still um, from, from demo kits. And as you can see, those O-rings are still working really well. So, um, you know, a lot of you guys may not need to ever replace the O-rings. It just, it just depends on how often you're, you're cleaning it and how often you're shooting. But once you clean these uh, baffles off and you make sure that these little ports are clear, which this one has had, I don't know, probably at least a thousand rounds through it or, or maybe, maybe closer to 2000. Um, and the ports are actually still clear on this one. So we don't need to take a dental pick in and clean those out or, or, or whatever. If they were to get clogged up, you'd want to do that, but, or, or throw them in the ultrasound cleaner, like I said. Um, but actually this one has really seen no maintenance in, in, a, in about a couple thousand rounds and it still looks pretty good to me. Um, so for reassembly, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna squeeze all these baffles together in order. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the reason why we put that scribed line on there is that we want the suppressor to perform to its optimal level of engineered performance. And so if you rotate these baffles, out of phase in a circular fashion and this line is not lined up, then you're not gonna get the guaranteed sound performance that we, that we wanna provide you guys with, which is, you know, it's important to us because we put a lot of time and, and research and testing into getting the suppressors as quiet as possible. So we put this line on here for you as an indicator that indeed, you know, you are getting the best performance possible when it's in that configuration. So from there, you're gonna take the rear easy lock mount and smush that on there. And that's basically a fully sealed silencer. Then from there, you'll just kind of push on this whole platter, make sure everything's seated nicely, okay? And put it back in, reassemble it. You know, you can take a dental uh, pick or something like that to peel those O-rings off of there if you want to replace them eventually. Um, but like I said, they don't need to be replaced very often. So then from there, just thread this in. and you'll see your wrench flats on the side that you're threading it into. Um, and then the, the front cap goes on there. Um, we, we do tell you in the user's manual to put a little bit of lubrication on this O-ring here uh, because we want that to slide nicely into the, into the uh, baffle assembly so that you don't twist your baffles out of phase when you're actually screwing this cap back on. Then take your quarter. This one still has a little bit of lube on it, so it's fine and just kind of slowly and smoothly, the manual says, screw this together, tighten it down. Your end cap will be flush basically with the end of the tube and then you're reassembled. So that's pretty much the ins and outs of the Checkmate HD. It's a super high quality 22 suppressor. Uh, this is the flagship 
essentially of the line. This is slightly different from the Optimus Micro in that the Optimus Micro has a full stainless steel tube as well, and also a little bit heavier. Hey guys, today we're gonna go over the direct thread feature of the Checkmate HD. Um, so when you buy the suppressor, what it's gonna come with is the Easy Lock in a half by 28 muzzle device adapter and the Easy Lock hub. So I really prefer this, you know, it's just a simple on and off miniature taper mount. Get it on there, get snug, you're ready to go. Only thing with this is you will need a muzzle device for each host firearm. Um, so if you're a guy out there with, you know, 10, 15 rim fires already, um, you know, not really wanna buy an adapter for each gun. So what you can do is just take the Easy Lock adapter, screw it in here, no thread locker, nothing. Get yourself a three quarter inch wrench. Just get this on here. Get it nice and snug. Now you got yourself a direct thread checkmate. Or if you want a uh, cam lock guy, buy the aftermarket accessories for it. Same thing. Get it in there. Take your three quarter inch wrench. No thread locker. Snug it up. Got a direct thread suppressor. So this is more a purpose built 22 rimfire suppressor. Um, it does provide you with, you know, all your rimfire calibers in 22, 22 long rifle, 22 short, 22 wind mag, also 17 HMR. Um, you can do 5.7 with this as well, as long as you allow it to cool after around 20 rounds or so. Um, but this is really just a high quality dedicated rimfire suppressor that's actually, you know, best on handguns, perfect on handguns because of the slender tube diameter. Um, this is the Beretta 9222 by Umarex, which I think, think is pretty cool because it looks like legit, like a M9. Um, so you just to, to give you kind of a sense of scale for you know how big the silencer is compared to something that you might know. Um, and with the Easy Lock, it's a super great attachment. Um, I also have a really cool rare pistol that we're gonna be showing off and I'm gonna give you guys the first look at it. This is a Sig P210. Uh, which is an original Swiss made pistol from the 50s. Um, this is a nine millimeter pistol. Uh, the Swiss military had these. They're very rare and high quality. And this one also has a, a very rare 22 long rifle conversion uh, slide on it. And our skilled machinists here at Griffin actually did a custom thread job on this. So they threaded back the barrel, they cut and threaded back the barrel for an adapter. And then we put the easy lock on here. So we're gonna be shooting this in some videos, so check that out. Super cool gun, very rare. I've actually never seen one suppressed and I've been looking at these pistols for probably close to 20 years. So, super cool gun. We're gonna be shooting a lot of cool guns in, the, in, in our other content with the Checkmate HD 22. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. Read up on the Carbon Guard, the Easy Lock, and the EcoFlow technologies in here. If you like this video, please like, share, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot.